Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. So today we're very happy to have Sebuk Jung from Rutgers uh, to tell us about intersecting defects in gauge theory. Uh, thank you. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank the organizers for having me in this nice series of workshop um, seminars. Today, I will talk about intersecting defects in gauge theory. And it is the talk is based on the, my recent paper with Norton Lee and Nikita Nekrasov. And there are two previous papers that I've done with Kita, and the contents of these papers are very much related to today's talk too. Um, <clears throat> so let me start from the motivation. As you all know, <clears throat> supersymmetric field theories exhibit interesting realities and correspondences. And here by correspondence, I mean the objects appearing on the other sides doesn't have to, don't have to be the same theory. That we started with. So um, these correspondences are nice because they provide novel intuitions and novel perspectives on the gauge theory dynamics. But it's also true, it sometimes happens that um, we, can, we can get non trivial consequences on the other sides from the knowledge of the gauge theory. So, in that sense, these relations are beneficial in both directions. So in fact, I would, I would talk about such non-trivial relations present in four-dimensional and equals two supersymmetric field theories. And the main thing can be summarized in the following diagram. So uh, first we have these n equals two field theories and we are looking at special kinds of it called class S uh, developed by David Gaiotto. So, it's special classes of uh, for the n equals two theories obtained by compactly fine 62,0 theory on a Riemer surface. And there's an ADE classification of the 62,0 theory. And I have to tell you which, which type it is. During the talk, it will be a n minus one type. And on the other side, we have a two dimensional conformal field theory. And um, which has infinite dimensional symmetry algebra. During the talk, it will be SN, S, SLN hat of find the algebra. Um, so basically, the, the, the correspondence states that the partition function, the partition function of, two, of two sides matches, match. And I will generally call generally call this correspondence as BPS CFT correspondence. <clears throat> so such a relation is interesting, of course, in itself. But what makes it even more interesting is further connections to other objects. Um, so these connections are obtained by taking certain degeneration limits of parameters. I didn't explain what omega background is yet, but let me here write omega epsilon one and epsilon two deformation. It's certain two parameter deformation of for the n equals two theory on the flat space time. And by taking epsilon two to zero limit, we are getting a connection to quantum interval system. Maybe you, uh, you might be familiar with the formula, uh, famous, famous story that for the n equals two story, Sorry, for the n equals to field theories are related to Hitchin integral system. Um, but in fact, it's not the presentation of integral system that I'm going to use today. Perhaps more surprisingly, it will be XXX pin chain that appears in the correspondence. Um, so, uh, so this really makes the PSJ CFT correspondence very interesting because from the knowledge of the gauge theory, we can tell some non-trivial consequences on the quantum metrical system side, in this case, XXX pin chain. Today, I will not talk about the other limit where I take the uh, epsilon one to zero limit. Here, we study certain matrix value, uh, matrix valued um, differential equation uh, it's called Fultzian system, and um, we study deformations of it 
which preserves the uh, monodromy. Uh, I, will not, I will not talk about this uh, today. I will focus on the VPS CFT correspondence and its implication on the quantum inter integral system side. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the main objects will be uh, correlation function of intersecting surface defects. So here I visualize the third dimensional word volume of the case theory. On the first complex plane, I will have a surface defect. And this is, this is just called regular defect. On the second plane, complex plane, I will have another surface defect. And there's a name for this called, this is called corded brain surface defect. So they are, they are transversally intersecting at the origin of the space time. The main claim will be the correlation function satisfies a difference equation called a fractional quantum theta equation. And it's going to be useful in the connection of the gauge theory with uh, the dimensional CFT and the integral system. I'll, I'll explain its implications. Okay. Now, <clears throat> okay, first let me uh, talk, recall a little bit about this affine the algebra SLN hat. This is in the 2D side. The J, uh, with the current J of J A of Z, with this OPE structure, and what's obvious from the OPE is that their zero modes satisfies the, the exactly the SLN commutation relation. So here the F A B C exact, is exactly the structure constant of the Lie algebra. K here is a complex number called K uh, level. Okay. <clears throat> and from that, we define the primary fields by V. It carries a representation V of the Lie algebra by the action of the zero modes as a generator of SLN represented on the V. And all the positive modes vanish, vanishes. <clears throat> so those are primary fields. And as a as correlation functions of them, we define zero zero conformal blocks, which I call psi of z. So since each primary field carries representation of SLN, it's an, it's an element of V1 tensor V2 tensor up to Vn. And it's invariant under the overall SLN action. So, and since I'm talking about genus zero conformal block, the position the eyes of the primary fields are in the Riemann sphere. Hmm. One nice thing about these conformal blocks are is they satisfy, they satisfy uh, differential equation called Michnik Jamalskov equation. It basically says that the, the, the variation with respect to the positions of the primary fields can be compensated by certain action of SLN. So here TAs are again the SLN generators. The subscripts i and j means they act on only on the i and j representations. So this equation is something that we're going to use. <clears throat> and the the main up the main concerns are four point and five point genus zero conformal block. So I have to I have to tell you which four representation I'm talking about. Um, it will be V tensor H tensor H tilde V tilde. Here V is a Verma module, 
of SLN. V tilde is another Verma module. And H, H tilde are something less familiar. It's called Heisenberg. Heisenberg by module. <clears throat> I will introduce. For the five point case, um, those four modules will be steered there. And uh, with, uh, n dimensional standard representation for all SLM. So, so why does it, why this four point component level? For me, it depends on Q. So uh, we, I have four primary fields and I can fix three of the positions to be zero, one in infinity, and I call the rest uh, Q. Similarly here, for the five point case, zero, Q, one in infinity, I, and I, I, the fifth representation is at Y. That's why it depends on Q and Y. <clears throat> so let me visualize this Riemann sphere. Here, uh, I do the double circles, which represent Verma modules. Here, are, I have two dots at Q and one. They are Heisenberg by modules. And I have a fifth representation for C to the n located at y. So if I'm talking about four point case, this is absent. If I'm talking about five point case, uh, it's here. So <clears throat> the connection to the 4D n equals two theory is that this Riemann, Riemann sphere will be what is called the UV curve for the class S theory that I'm talking about. So this 4D n equals two theory has gauge group G S U N with the meta multiplex being n fundamental hypermultiplex and n anti fundamental hypermultiplex. Simply, it's not to be case. <clears throat> okay. Now. <clears throat> It's, it's convenient to adopt the brain picture to see, first of all, how such 4D to D relation arises. And by using the brain picture, we can engineer various defects and we can study their effects on the 4D side and 2D side. So for example, there will be uh, brains that will engineer hypermultiplex in the 4D side that will correspond to inserting certain vertex operators in the 2D side. On top of it, I, I said I'm going to insert surface defects, and it will extend the symmetry algebra from the WN algebra from XLN hat that I'm interested in. The second kind of surface defects um, corresponds to inserting a special vertex operator. Sebiok, <clears throat> it's it's. Uh, n or 2n fundamentals and anti fundamentals? Yeah. Uh, it's n fundamental and n, n. anti fundamental. Okay. So Thank it's uh, class as super conformity theory. Uh, so <clears throat> this is a type 2a brain picture, um, firstly studied by Edward Witten. We have NS5, NS5 brain at 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, and D4 brains at 0, 1, 2, 3. So actually, I'll have two NS5 brains as vertical lines, and I have N D4 brains in between on the left and on the right. So, how, how does this realize the gaze theory? by the open strings um, connecting the D4 brains in the middle, I realized the, the, the vector multiplet 
the fundamental hypermerger class becomes um, is realized by the uh, the strings open strings between the D four brains across and its five brains, and also the anti fundamentals. Um, and then. <clears throat> We think of the M theory uplift. Where this NS5 brain and D4 brain both uplift to M5 brain. So let me call it M51 and M52. And I will visualize the word volume of M51. So it's two complex planes and C. So I have two complex planes and this is the direction of X4 and the M theory circle uh, is this compact direction. And <clears throat> this M5 ones besides the um, real, uh, so as you can see here, uh, the word volume of M51 spans C times C times so, um, uh, the Cauley C, the four and the 10 direction. And the M52 wraps the two complex planes. So it wraps for the four dimensional word volume. And it, 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 it's role play uh, it's local in the in the in the in the C four and ten, and <clears throat> you can easily rec recognize that this is uh, precisely the Riemann surface C, the UB curve, and this M five two, the second, the M five two gives the gives the um, vertex operators in the two D side. So if I take the holomorphic coordinate t to be exponential minus x ten or i x ten, um, will be zero q at one and infinity. So this is the this is precisely the same picture that I that I showed you earlier. <clears throat> so in the four D side we have the uh, and, and equals two theories, and equals two theory, and the, the other side, the 2D side, uh, we have a two-dimensional theory which has infinite symmetry algebra, infinite dimensional symmetry algebra. <clears throat> now, in fact, <clears throat> this is not, uh, the type 2A picture is not exactly what I'm going to do, actual computation. So I'm going to tedialize the X4 direction by adding uh, NS5 brain at infinity so that the D4 brains can add and at infinity. Um, but so we, we, we get into the type 2B picture. Then the NS5 brains becomes the KK monopoles. Uh, which can be understood as the transverse geometry being a polypore singularity, in this case, C2 mod C3. So D4 brains lose one direction, one dimension, and it becomes D3 brains. And this is where, uh, where the actual computation is done. So, the reason why I'm introducing this type 2D picture is that I will add additional structures that engineer surface defects in the 4D perspective. <clears throat> then, but before going to that, <clears throat> the, the quantity that we are really computing in the gauge theory side is a partition function on the omega D for me, omega D back, omega background. Um, so the supersymmetric localization uh, 
localizes the path integral into a finite dimensional integral over the multiply space of instant times. So the partition function z, it depends on various parameters that I that I will explain in a minute. It localizes onto the moduli space of instantons, and it's uh, essentially 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 the volume of the moduli space. Since this space is non compact, uh, we turn on the equilibrium parameters. The equilibrium parameter with respect to global symmetry group. So this theory has global symmetry of uh, global gauge group, global gauge symmetry group, space time isometry SO4, and the fundamental hypermultiplet flavor symmetry and anti fundamental hypermultiplet flavor symmetry. So they corresponds to Coulomb moduli for UN. SO4 gives two omega deformation parameters. UN cross UN gives the hypermultiple masses. Here Q is the gauge coupling exponential to pi i tau. <clears throat> Okay. Then by equivariant localization, um, the, the this, this finite dimension integral becomes uh, a summation over fixed points of the moduli space under this symmetry. That's classified by lambda, which I call lambda. These are partitions. And um, due to the lambda, I will collectively call what's appearing on the right hand side as mu lambda. So the partitions are the young diagrams that the partitions can be represented, that represented by young diagrams. We are summing over all the all of those young diagrams with certain measure of mu lambda. Okay. So <clears throat> I didn't insert any surface defect yet, but the state statement of the correspondence without the defect is. This partition function is equivalent to WN algebra conformal blocks. And this is exactly the famous <clears throat> Arei Gayoto Tatsukawa correspondence. And there are many subsequent works on these relations. And now I'm talking about inserting surface defects on top of it. And I, as I told you, I go back to this type 2B picture and insert additional structure. First of all, I will add additional OB fold. So if you if you view this transverse geometry, C to two four, it's now OB folded by uh, OB folded by ZN action. And also, I'll insert another stack of on another D3 grain on two, three, six, seven. So they correspond to surface defects and I will, I will explain how they um, can be regarded one by one. Okay. First of all, let me talk about this OB fold. <clears throat> if I just say this OB fold engineers a surface defect, then um, 
it wouldn't make much sense. So let me view this in the purely 4D perspective. So in the purely 4D perspective, we now have the gauge theory on the ZN ovipole, where the ovipole reaction is given by this. The second complex plane is ovipole with this action. So why does this, why can, can it be viewed as a surface defect? Because first we can, we can take a map from this ovipole to the ordinary C2, this map, where the, the first coordinate is, is not touched, but the second coordinate I define to be Z2 to the N, then I don't see this ovipole in the geometry anymore because, well, this map is um, trivialized. So, so the, the space time is just becomes ordinary C2, but there's a price to pay. The price to pay is that now this map is singular along Z2 equals zero. So we have to allow singularity of the fields along this, along the surface, which looks like this. Here, the theta is the angular coordinate around D3 equals zero, a singular, a singular locus. So <clears throat> surface defects um, is defined by this singular behavior, singular boundary condition. And such a surface defects are called, are called monogamy defect or Gilko Witten type defect. We can recognize the global, global gauge symmetry is explicitly broken by this boundary condition. For example, if these values of alphas are already, already distinct, the global gauge group will be broken into the maximum torus. And in fact, that's the case I would consider. So it's U1 to the N minus one in the SUN. But such a case is called a regular defect. So in the brain picture, this uh, boundary condition can be realized by letting the champ pattern space of the three brains carry ZN charges. So this N is C N dimensional, N -dimensional vector space, which is the champ pattern space of N D3 brains. Now they are decomposed now into n one-dimensional spaces, each of which carries the Zn charges omega. So this is the one-dimensional representation of Zn with charge omega. So by using this, um, the computation of the Computation of the partition function in the free sense of the surface defect uh, can be easily obtained. <clears throat> so <clears throat> to see how this insertion of the surface defect uh, affects the 2D side, we need to incorporate this into the M theory picture. <clears throat> so there's a T dual frame where I will not go over this step by step now, but let's look at the second table where we have all three of them now becomes D4, D4 brains. We shall lift it to M5 brains. So again, if I visualize the world volume of M51 on two complex planes and a Riemann surface, we still have this defect M52. <clears throat> but now we have additionally have M53, uh, which wraps the first complex plane and the Riemann surface. 
So this was this is the previous picture where I have two and five tubes. They give vertex operators two and one. The additional M53, now as you can see, wraps the first complex plane, but it also wraps the whole Riemann surface. <clears throat> so, in other words, it alters the two dimensional theory itself and therefore the symmetry algebra itself. So, as I said here, uh, um, regular surface defect is realized by additional M53, the green. In particular, the M53 brains wrap the Riemann surface and altering the, the vertex operator algebra in the 2D side. To compare with, uh, the, with the case that we don't have the surface defect, I um, let me re, uh, re, uh, remind you the, the corresponding algebra was WN algebra. And the partition function in the 4D side was matched with the WN algebra conformal blocks. Now we have the vacuum expectation value of regular defect. We inserted the regular defect. And the 2D side, the corresponding object will be SLM hat conformal block. The algebra gets extended. And it, in fact, <clears throat> um, there has been some checks of, uh, of these cases too, in the rank one case in, in the series expansion in both sides. But the idea is that we know that the, the object on the right hand side satisfy the KZ equation that I introduced in the first slide. And we can show that the, the vacuum expectation value of the regular surface defect satisfies the same equation and therefore, therefore drives the, the equivalence of the two. Okay. So, <clears throat> first, how do we compute the value of the regular defect? So in the actual computation, what we do is the following. We have this projection, uh, this mapping from the OB4 to the ordinary C2. It induces a projection from the moduli space of instantons on the OB4 to the instantons on the ordinary C2. So I, I have written here the mm, I've written here the the, the moduli space flow in, in some tons on the open fold realized as a linear maps. So here uh, so if you had the n space, chunk pattern space. The three brains and the K space, chem pattern space of the instantons. Since because of the OB fold, they becomes they now carry the ZN charges, and accordingly, these linear maps are fractionalized. And from that, we can be, we can get the moduli space of instantons. On the OB4. And the, we can find the projection of this moduli space to the moduli space so instantons on the modular C2 that I, the projection was, is written in here. But basically, the idea is that or by, by composing these various maps, we can find D1 tilde, B2 tilde, I tilde, and J tilde, which Compose the ordinary instant moduli space. So 
So using this, the way I produce the surface defect observable is first do the integral over the fiber of the projection, leaving the integral over, over the base, which will produce some observable. And this is exact, exactly This can be uh, uh, this can be um, interpreted as the expectation value of s. Um, more precisely, by the by the equivalent by the localization, this will be again um, this will be summation over the partitions, but now the partitions carry z n charges. So there will be n z and charges, and we have n counting parameters for those. And I will collectively call everything else, uh, everything that appears as mu lambda. By the projection, um, we can have, sorry, I'll, I'll first write this. So the projection pi of the moduli space <clears throat> the projection pi of the moduli space will be this will descend to the fixed points. So the fixed points uh, capital lambda will be mapped to the, to the fixed points of the ordinary moduli space. So we can we can we can take the summation of this uh, capital lambda first some some summing over uh, a, a lamb partitions and then we can So we, we can split the summation into two parts. We first the, we first sum so, so we sum over the inverse image of a given lambda, and then we sum over lambda, and we can interpret this the whole thing as the observable produced by integrating over the fiber. So. We therefore produce produce a surface observable S lambda. So this is the object that um, this is the object uh, that satisfies the KZ equation. Um, okay, sorry. <clears throat> So this is the this is the vacuum expectation value of the sur surface defect. That's in the 4D side, and it can be shown that this object satisfies the KZ equation with the help of additional structure. Um, the additional structure is called QQ characters. And um, it's certain chiral observable, uh, local chiral observable, with the property that its expectation value is regular in the auxiliary parameter x. So, using this regularity property, we can constrain the vacuum expectation value psi. Um, we can drive uh, drive the analytic constraints that psi of q satisfies, and the result is this. So it precisely comes into the form of the KZ equation, and you can recognize epsilon two over epsilon one, 
it is matched with a k minus k minus n. And the operator h0 and h1 are written in terms of the differential operators uh, in the, the fraction coupling. These fraction couplings are the counting, the counting parameter q omega. So to match with the 2D side, we really, really have to um, say how these H0 and H, H1 are, um, are, given, uh, are, are given by um, the SLN action on specific SLN representations. So as I told you, this H0 in the conformal field theory, in the 2D side, it was the SLN generators acting on H tensor V. So that means these differential operators give rise to certain SLN representations. And <clears throat> those representations are, for example, Heisenberg bimodial that I introduced earlier. Um, so consider the vector space of Rouen polynomials with n f zero variables. So we only consider the degree zero piece of Laurent polynomials and n of zero variables, and are we multiplied by overall. <clears throat> and represent the GLN algebra by this differential operator. And it's obvious that this satisfies the commutation relation of the V algebra. And in particular, these modules are uh, neither ice weight nor lowest weight. <clears throat> so they, they are um, not usually considered, but um, they have this property. So now we match the z omega parameters in the case three side with these auxiliary parameters by this. So here we have u omega, which realizes one of the Heisenberg volume module. We have another Heisenberg volume module with the auxiliary parameter u omega tilde. <clears throat> and the z omega parameters are exactly matched with this combination. There are also the weight parameters zeta, theta tilde, beta, and beta tilde. They, they, they parameterize the weights of the states in the, these modules. They get maps to the Coulomb moduli of the 4D theory and the masses of the 4D theory. So there is a price, price precise mapping between these parameters. So uh, long story short, this the four point the four point conformal blob get 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 matched with the, the vacuum expectation value of the 4D N equals two of the regular defect in the 4D N equals two theory. And that's provided by the KZ equation. We we, we show the 4D the vacuum expectation value of the regular defect satisfies the KZ equation. Okay, then I'll move on to the five-point case. So 
So here then I have an, an additional at C to the N representation, standard rep, and dimension and dimension representation. And this five point case is almost similar to the four point case. I mean, it, it can be think, thought of as the um, N of them, N of the four point case, because the tensor product of one Verma module with the C to the N can be shown to be a direct sum of N Verma modules with the shifted weights. So if I remind you this five point component block is in the representation V to V tensor, H tensor, H tilde tensor, V tilde, and then C to the N. So we use this decomposition in the last tensor product, and then we get N of the, N of the uh, four point cases. So I go back to the type 2B brain picture, and as I promised, this OB fold realizes the regular surface defect. And now I add further this D3 brain. So on this um, two, three, and six, seven more volume. And you can see how they intersect with the original stack of D3 brains. So the word volume was zero, one, two, three, and it, it intersects at the sec, uh, second complex plane. And it has, it has certain transverse directions too. So in that sense, this is called 4D brain surface defect. So uh, let me draw um, the picture that I drew earlier. We have these two vertex operators. And I, I have been talking about this regular defect, which wraps the full Riemann surface. So the symmetry algebra now became the SLN hat, the, the affine algebra. And now we have further uh, the defect that's realized by the, this addition of D3 brain. Actually, so it, it's, it will be unlifted to an M2 brain in the M brain picture. So M2 brain that wraps the second complex plane and it will assume a position on the remote surface. So it gives a special vertex operator of SLN. And I claim this vertex operator is associated with the N dimension representation. <clears throat> so the way we prove this is again using the case equation. We have five point case equation. We first compute the five, uh, we first compute the correlation function of two intersecting surface defects, the, the 4D side here, and show it satisfies the expected case equation. <clears throat> As in the as in the as in the earlier case with one surface defect, I will first in, introduce introduce how we compute the correlation function. Um, since we have additional word volume of D three brain, um, the the the, the modified space of instantons gets even larger because of the presence of the addition of D3 brain. So we can similarly find a projection to the ordinary mode by space of instantons. So that's the, so this <clears throat> M hat is the, the mode by space of instantons. On this extended world volume of D3 brain, we have intersecting D3 brains on OB4. We find a projection to the ordinary mode by space of instanton on C2. And then we integrate over the fiber first to produce certain observables. So schematically, uh, we, we are looking at this integral over the moduli space of instantons on this uh, lar uh, larger world volume. We relieve the integral along the base 
in, integral along the fiber produces uh, the con contribution from the Z1, the first complex plane and the second complex plane. And they can be interpreted as surface defects of observables. So this is nothing but the correlation function of them. <clears throat> By using the localization, the equivariant localization, uh, we can take it uh, in the form of the summation of the, over the Young diagrams again, due to the lambda, U lambda, we produce certain observable over X, lambda, and S omega L lambda. So, so I, I call this correlation function as Q omega of X. Uh, it, it depends on additional parameter X. And, <clears throat> Again, by using the QQ characters, that's again certain local observables with nice property, being um, its expectation value uh, is regular in a zero, certain auxiliary parameter, we can drive a difference equation, which looks like this. So here, um, the M, and the, which are appearing here and here, they are hypermetric flat masses. Qs are the counting parameters for the fractional instantons. And Z omegas are the, the ratio of them. So on the left hand side, we have this um, shifted Q observables, the shift, shifted correlation functions. And on the right hand side, we have a certain differential operator acting on Q omega. Now, this, so this is interesting because of its implications on the correspondence to the 2D side, to the CFT side, and the integral system side. Um, first of all, What's, what is its implication in the 2D side? Um, first, I form a column vector uh, of, of those coidential functions. And I take the Fourier transform of it. <clears throat> and the, 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 the difference equation that I just, just showed you implies this the, uh, differential equation. I can I I I, trans, I have transformed the object Q omega. So the difference equation now becomes a differential equation with respect to y and also um, the, the the z omegas. Uh, that's that's in these coefficients. And this is precisely the five point z equation in the y component. We can also prove uh, the q component of the k z equation. And they precisely match what with what we expect. So let me let me just deliver the message that the fractional quantum theory equation is translated as a Fourier transform of the KZ equation, which is which is expected from the 2D viewer side. And furthermore, it is even more interesting because um, we have explicit solutions of the KZ equation in terms of this omega, uh, Q omega. So we free a transform Q omega and produce the epsilon, which is a solution of the KZ equation. And in this way, if the, the, well, what, well, the connection with the 2D, I'm sorry, the connection with the quantum integral system is, uh, becomes more obvious. So that's 
what I'm going to introduce for them. Um, <clears throat> so the fractional quantum Tick equation now can be casted into form of the two by one matrix equation. So I define certain column vector, two by one column vector like this with a Q omegas. And this equation can be written in this form with this two by two operator value matrix. And with certain gauge transformation that I didn't write explicitly, this uh, come into the form of the last operator of the XXX spin chain. <clears throat> so indeed, so indeed, uh, this L omega here, call the L omega here, is the two by two matrix, the element whose elements being the SL two spin operators. And the mapping with the gauge theory parameter is that this theta, which is called inhomogeneity, and the spins, uh, which appear in the SL2 spin operators, are mapped to the masses of the hypermultiplex. And the auxiliary gamma variables, which realizes, X, S, or sorry, realizes SL2 spin operators, uh, are mapped to certain combinations of Z omega, the fractional couplings. So we can recognize um, so we can recognize this fractional quantum T equation gives certain spin chain, XXX spin chains defined on certain local local Hilbert spaces called um, H here. So this is again Heisenberg by module for the SL2 case. I'll just write how they, they are realized as a as a round polynomial in gamma omega, the the, the auxiliary variables. You can easily you can easily see that these spin operators represent on this space, um, they form an SL2 algebra. And from, from these lots of operators, we can take the end products of them, consecutive products, and form a um, transfer mat the monodromy matrix from which um, we can we can uh, get the spectral problem of the speed spin chain. So it shows how the how the, the correlation functions of the intersecting surface defects give, give rise to certain XXX spin chain system. Okay. So. So there was um, the spin chain story. There are there are further applications of the there are further applications of the PPS CFT correspondence uh, by taking epsilon one to zero limit. Uh, it's related to a uh, differential equation um, and uh, monodromy preserving deformations of it. That. Um, I will not um, go into the detail. And, and also um, the SLN Gedang spectral problem can be also associated. Um, so I introduced the XXX X spin chain presentation of the integral system, but it turns out that they are they are related to the SLN Gedang system by the certain duality called by spectral duality. And um, it's it's in the it, uh, it, it is a uh, work in progress. Okay, so um, so that's all for my talk.
Okay. Thank you, Zaluk. Uh, let's see, are there questions? I, I have a naive question. So yeah. when you say that those uh, correlation conformal blocks satisfy KZ equation, uh, but, but you know, um, they, they take values in Verma modules and, 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 you know, so forth, as you mentioned, they're not conventional highest weight or lowest weight modules. Yeah. So, but, but the, so, so the KZ equation can still be verified? Yeah, that's true. So um, two of them are still the Verma modules that I wrote somewhere. So here <clears throat> I have uh, two Verma modules and uh, this is, uh, unusual non high space, non noise space, whatever modules. And yes, we can still write down the KZ equation because the KZ equation will be, can be written even with, within, even if it's not, even if it's not a high space or noise space Verma module. And we can, in the gauge theory side, on the other hand, we can derive this KZ equation as a formal differential equation. Okay, so. Yeah, so KZ equation, if I remember correctly, is just the, the, the fact that the, the Verasoro generator can be written as a uh, bilinear of the uh, Kasmudi generator. So I guess that's, that that's works correct. for any case. I see. That's correct. So what I'm saying here, so let's let's look at here. This is the gauge theory consequence. I, I have written in, ter, in the form of the KZ equation. So the, you're asking about this H0 and H1. For example, the H0 will be represented as a TA tensor TA on certain module H and V, right? Right. And V is Verma module, as I told you, and H is the unusual uh, Heisenberg by module. The, the idea is that both of them, both of generators TA on H and V will be realized in, in terms of certain, certain differential operator. Right. Okay. So, right. Thank you. In the, in, in, so in that way, we can find a match between the two objects. Right. Is there any other questions? Um, maybe I can ask a question. So. Um, so I remember, I mean, a while ago when um, people were looking at this type of uh, um, generalization of the anti uh proposal, they looked also at uh, uh, surface operator corresponding at more general um, partitions of N and they could uh, you know, yeah. do something about, uh, you know, conformal blocks of some generalization of these. Uh, yeah. So do you, can you say something in this direction for more yeah. generalization? It will be, <clears throat> so I talked about a certain surface defects. If I consider more general surface defects, then I will uh, produce those um, other symmetry algebras. So here, I, I, I call it regular, right? Um, this is certain surface defect realized by Obifold. And uh, regular defects will give rise to SLN hat um, current algebra. But more, more general symmetry algebra can be realized by taking uh, more general before the any action. So for example, the, so, the, 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 so those algebra can, so can be, those algebras can be obtained by the reductions of SLN hat. And on the gaze theory side, that corresponds to certain obifold uh, surface defect, which where we, we can also compute the partition functions. On the 2D side, we can compute the conformal blocks and we can uh, check whether they match. What I cannot do is that we don't have a closed form equation like KZ equation anymore. So that's, uh, that's worse than the, the than the current case where I can write down the case equation, the closed form equation, and I can use of it. I can make use of it to prove the state. I see. So you can, I mean, 
as in the old days, one could just check perturbatively the, the match of the volume, right. the, the instant on partition but, function with the expansion of the conformal block, but you are saying that right. the, okay. those, those perturbative checks were indeed done in many works. I think starting from Arde and Tachikawa, there was another paper, uh, Kano and Tachikawa, and so on and so forth. But here now, I, I'm, I'm saying we are really want to prove it by saying uh, by showing gauge theory object satisfied that satisfies the same equation. So it it's proof it's uh, it's approved by uh, uh, um, analytic constraints. Are there any other questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Sebok again for the wonderful talk. <laughs>